Hello again and welcome to another Morning Mondays, this is episode 56. Now for those of you that may be new to the Morning Mondays and to the Morning Glory channel, this series of videos is a little different to what I normally do. It's much more casual and it's where I focus on the hobby aspect of what I've been working on uh, over the week. Uh, originally it was focused entirely on the Great Morning Restoration Project, which is where I took my old battered Morgians that have, have been with me for many, many years, and I stripped them down and I repainted them. That project's ongoing. It's gonna be ongoing for probably several years to come now because I have a, just a silly amount of Morgian Iron Guard. But occasionally, for a month or so, I like to take a break from just painting Endless Waves of Guardsmen and paint up some other stuff. And that's what I've been working on recently, and that's what we'll be going through later on in this video. But long story short, guys, Morning Mondays is all about just casual hobby stuff, and then we get into the much more serious uh, tactics videos later on. I will, however, say that I always do talk about what I have painted up and why I have painted up, both from a fluff narrative but also a tactical perspective. Um, so there's a, there's a little bit of everything in these videos. Uh, a bit of tactics, a bit of fluff, a bit of narrative, a bit of history, depending on what game system. Uh, I'm playing. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Now, first things first, I would say the audio for this video might sound a little different. That's because I have completed the house move. That is co correct, guys. I have moved out of my small, tiny flat and I have managed to get myself a nice, normal sized house um, and we've done the big move. And so uh, I've moved everything over, so that's good. But I'm in the new, I'm in the new office now, the new, the new battle bunker, shall we say? Um, it's not fully sorted out yet. I feel like it might sound a little echoey, so just let me know. But don't worry, that should be should be temporary because I'm going to obviously fill this room with more stuff, and then it shouldn't be as echoey. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention before getting into you know today's hobby and whatnot is that the Morning Glory Winter's SEO Battle Report is finally live, guys. That is right. Go on over to the Winter's SEO channel and finally see my face reveal on the Winter's SEO channel. Can't hide behind the camera anymore, guys. Uh, you know, I, I will say, you know, go and look at that with your, your own peril. <laughs> but no, uh, all jokes aside, um, it was re it's, it's really good that the, the battle report's been released. Um, and it's it's an absolutely cracking game. I don't want to do any spoilers uh, today, guys. But if you haven't seen it, I do recommend you go check it out. I will put a link down in the description of this video. Um, you know, just obviously a massive thank you to Winters for, for for having me and for, you know, promoting my channel a little bit on his channel. It's all, it's all really good. And to be honest, it was just a really, really, uh, it was a really great game. A uh, really good experience. And it was just nice to hang out with with winters and just chill you know we had a few drinks i took him down some iron brew i was kind of hoping he hadn't had it before because he's a he's a southerner but uh, uh it turns out he has had it so they even even down in darkest darkest south england they have they have tasted the sacred iron brew so that was that was good though uh, and yeah we just had a great time and it was awesome Ho hopefully we'll be able to work on some more stuff in the future uh, obviously it's extremely uncertain at the moment with the second big uk lockdown looming over us the damn curse of unbelief has struck and struck us struck and struck us again but uh yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes um so this those those are the first couple of bits i wanted to mention so moving on to uh See if I open this door makes a bit of a difference. It sounds a little less echoey now. Um, so just moving on to what I've been working on. So despite the fact that I, well, I could say one thing that I painted. I painted my, you know, painted my entire house last week. So I, I didn't take any pictures of that because it's all full of boxes now. But uh, that was a lot of painting done. <laughs> that was that was five or six days of just solid painting. But that was just walls of the roll, and I don't think you guys are overly interested in that. Although I will say, the proper YouTube studio, Morning Glory, phase three, phase four, who knows? The new phase of the Morning Glory channel is right around the corner. So I have negotiated with High, High Command, AKA the Misses, and uh, I have a full room dedicated to 40K 
goodness now for all bath reports. We're gonna we're gonna pimp it out. It'll probably start off a little basic at first, although you know um, I may not have may not be able to do some battle reports for a while. So having that time to deck out the new YouTube studio and uh, make it look awesome might mean that you won't have to see the basic version. Maybe you'll get to see the straight up completed awesome. We're gonna do loads of cool like artwork and pictures and then we're gonna make it feel like a proper, like a nerd cave. So that would be cool. But one way or another, basically guys, the, the, the short answer is that I have a I have a dedicated battle report space now. So I know many of you will be sad to see that, you know, the sofa in the background is gone and the TV in the living room. No more battle reports in the living room, guys. Uh, it's been many years, many great highs, many great lows. Many trials and tribulations, amazing victories, crushing defeats have been had in the living room. But that that is finally, after many years, that that is not going to be where we do the filming anymore. I've got a, a, a sweet, dedicated space. So that's going to be really good. Um, it's still going to be, obviously, the normal the normal format, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but that's all the, the non-model related updates that I want to give. So there we go. Uh, and let's get on to what we're all really here for, which is the goddamn models. Now, what I've been working on uh, over the last few weeks uh, has been my Imperial Japanese Army. I have to say, guys, uh, last morning when I did, I featured these guys in. I said I was at the 500 point mark. Uh, I've been beavering away on this army. I'd say I'm probably closer now. I'm probably pretty close to the thousand point mark. I'd probably say I'm at maybe 800, 800 points. So yeah, and if, I've got about 100 points a week done roughly, which is pretty good for bot action. You know, comparatively for, for 40k, a thousand point bot action army is a 2000 point 40k army. So I'm really close. I'm really, really close to having the, the Imperial Japanese Army finished. In fact, I've just got three weapon teams left. I've got a medium mortar, a very light howitzer, and a medium anti-tank gun left over. So uh, that's what's coming next week, hopefully. But let's take a look at what I've been working on this week. So th this is my Imperial Japanese Army for bot action. And... I have been, I've kind of done all the line infantry now, so I've been focusing on special weapons and support teams and officers. So uh, the first team I've been, looking, I've been working on, which is this one that's just popped up here, is my anti-tank rifle team. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realise this until this second picture. It looks like this anti-tank rifle is suffering from a little bit of a of wilt, maybe a bit of a anti-tank erectile dysfunction rifle or something, but. Uh, uh, yeah, so anti-tank rifles in but action are quite interesting. Uh, I really enjoyed painting that model. Look, it's very simple. It's it's you, the heads come separately, but the the rest of it's just single molded model. Um, the casts are a little rough. I will say the warlord metal casts are a little rough, but to be honest, they're no different from what I've had to deal with with the old Games Workshop metal casts. It's just metal casting. The quality is a bit is a bit different. Uh, so no matter where you go, there's always going to be problems with metal casting, uh, metal models. But yeah, so light, uh, the anti-tank rifle, it's a light anti-tank option. To be honest, guys, a lot of people don't bother with the anti-tank rifle in, in a lot of armies. I've always found them to be, to be very useful, though. Um, they are, despite being an anti-tank rifle, they can't really deal with anything other than light armoured vehicles. And even then... Anything that's above a, 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 a light armoured car, the anti-tank rifle is really going to struggle with, and probably won't even damage it. Um, it can, you know, it can it can hurt a Sherman tank on the side armour, and I believe it can hurt a Stuart light tank on the front armour, but barely. It will glance it. It'll barely hurt it. Uh, so in that case, why take the anti-tank team? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's cool, you know, it's very cool, uh, and secondly, um, it's a good, it's a good deterrent, and it it will always slap a pin 
on an enemy and even if you just put one pin marker on an enemy it might mean that they fail and they can't do anything so those that don't know how bot action works very quickly when you shoot at an enemy even if you don't hurt them if you hit them so if you roll your dice and you hit them you put a, a pin marker on them to make them it's to represent them go oh shit we've been shot at and the more pins you know for every unit that shoots at them you can put more pin at the enemy you can put more pins on the enemy unit and eventually you'll make it where that enemy unit is just hugging the dirt so you don't even have to kill the enemy to uh to start incapacitating them which is a really nice mechanic it means you don't have to rely on killing things things you know lethality isn't as important as you know keeping the enemy's head down it's a very nice game mechanic something that i don't think we work in 40k currently with the volume of dice that get put out but definitely something that makes but action a very interesting game to play um uh so what's what normally tanks can't be pinned obviously we shoot a, a rifle a uh, tank Unless the crew is extremely inexperienced, you know, experienced or regular or veteran, they're the three ranks of infantry you get, or vehicle or unit you get. Unless uh, it's inexperienced, uh, a rifle won't bother a tank. Uh, but an anti-tank rifle, it has a chance of, it, it, no matter how small, it has a chance of maybe damaging that vehicle slightly. And so as a result... Um, it's a good way it can put a pin marker on it. So because it has penetration, it can put a pin marker on a vehicle. Regular rifles can't. And so what's good about the anti-tank rifle is it's very cheap, it's very cool, and it can just sling out a good chance of just putting a pin on the enemy. And every pin counts in bot action. So it's good. And it's also perfect. You, you know, you don't necessarily want to get your big, massive, you know, anti-tank cannon and be shooting at an enemy's light armored vehicle would be massive overkill sometimes an anti-tank rifle is all you need to just have that little bit of anti-tank in your arm bot action is mostly an infantry game so you don't need too much anti-tank there you go so that's the first thing so the second thing i've been working on is the sniper team snipers are very cool in bot action uh they this one you can buy them uh as a metal blister from warlord but you don't need to the basic infantry box that you get will easily give you the ability to make a sniper how i made my sniper is i got two of the prone models that come in the basic infantry box by the way you get 30 infantry in a, in a 30 infantry for 25 pounds from warlords rather than 30 rather than 10 infantry for 25 pounds from games workshop and um the the yeah you can make a sniper so you get two of the prone guys lined up i put a rifle over the back of one and gave him the binoculars that's the spotter so he just looks he's just like he just helps the sniper hit and then the sniper itself what i did is i actually took a pair of binoculars and cut cut them if you look at what the sniper goes back up i cut the binoculars up so it's three separate parts the two the two lenses in the middle bit and then i re-glued them in a line so rather than being side by side, I re glued them in a, in a line and I stuck that on the side of the of the sniper rifle and it looks like a, a sniper scope. So that was really cool. Snipers are really good. Uh, they are obviously very good at pinning and they're also very good at sniping important enemy characters and special weapon gunners. And they have the ability to just to one shot support teams if, uh, if you get lucky. So really good uh, and uh, again in bolt action snipers are kind of considered you know from a tactical point of view really good they actually again uh, uh, the good thing about snipers in bolt action is they feel like snipers should feel which is something that it depends on what faction you play can be missing in 40k it, it really can be you know snipers sometimes just feel like another type of special weapon and not like something that actually pins and takes out important characters and key things yeah so the next team that i've been working on is these three cheeky chappies my light machine guns now again these are made from the basic infantry box you can buy these separately as metal models and they come in a variety of poses but in the infantry box you get two poses i just built all mine lying down because i wanted to use this the other poses as regular riflemen uh yeah, this this LMG, it's these three LMGs. They're really uh, they're not ideal for a Japanese list. Most Japanese players will tell you you don't even want to you don't want to put anything in your Japanese 
basic squads. You just want to get as many basic bozos on the field as you can. But uh, I like light machine guns. I think they're really cool. Um, and they're a bit more, I don't know. I, I, just, I just like light machine guns no matter what army I'm playing. Uh, you know, no matter what game system I'm playing, I like light machine guns. Even video games, I like light machine guns. So I think they're, they're really good. How they work for um, inbot action is they, they simply just have a really high rate of fire. You know, one man puts up four shots rather than uh, you need to you need to you need a, a shooter and a loader, but two men would normally put out two shots, whereas with a light machine gun, two men put out four shots, which is just better. And they have a longer range, and so you can reach out and you know again pin and just do strafing fire from a long a long a long range. So it's really good. Um, so the next thing that they they just go in the basic infantry squads, guys. They're just going to go in my three. Uh, three of my infantry sections. So I have 28 line infantry, which is enough for me to take four seven man, which is minimum size Japanese infantry squads. And I probably would do that. And I probably would take three with light machine guns. I mean, I'd have to if I wanted to take four minimum size infantry squads. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got um, in my 1,000 point army, I've got four squads of infantry, which is pretty good. With you know three light machine guns and two SMGs sprinkled between them. Uh, so what else have I got? So now we get on to some of the more wacky Japanese things. We've got a couple of suicide anti-tank guys. That's right, guys. In the Japanese army, you can take you can take suicide bombers. Essentially, there's no way of really sugarcoating it. Uh, what these guys do though is um, they essentially are uh, one-shot weapons. It's a bit like a hunter-killer missile, but imagine if the hunter-killer missile was a guy. It's pretty, you think 40k is grimdark. Yeah, bolt action's got its own thing. And it's historically accurate as well, especially near the near the end of the war when the bigger uh, allied tanks started turning up. The Japanese really didn't have sufficient anti-tank options. You know, those anti-tank rifles were obsolete. Their anti-tank guns, the some that existed were either obsolete or f few and far between, and their own tanks couldn't really deal with the Allied tanks very well at all. So what the Japanese ended up resorting to were some pretty horrendous methods that were they were kind of effective, but they were pretty dark. Uh, and this is represented on the, in the in the bolt action by the fact that you can take a few of these suicide tank guys. How they work is they have no guns and they can all they have to do is to make it base to base with an enemy unit. When that happens, the enemy unit suffers one really strong attack. So if you run this in the side of a, and it just automatically hits. So if you run this into the side of a vehicle, you'll probably blow the vehicle up. At the very least, you're going to do some serious damage to it. You can run them into infantry, but they don't have a blast effect. They don't do multiple hits. They will essentially just atomize one infantryman. So it's an anti-tank charge that they're armed with, not an anti-personnel. So there's no blast effect. Uh, you might say, why would you ever do that? Well, you know, if it's an enemy officer and he, his attendant has been killed and he's on his own, you can run this anti-tank guy into the officer and blow him up. Also, you've got weapon teams as well, so, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, that, but but really, you don't want to be doing that. Really, you want to be um, you want to be using these to attack tanks. I bought these metal ones because they came with the anti-tank rifle, and I wanted the anti-tank rifle. So I think you got four models for about five pounds, uh, and. But you don't need to. Again, you can make these with lunge mines, which are like basically anti-tank charges on the end of a big stick. Still count as suicide anti-tank guys. Um, and you can build those from the basic infantry squad as well. So that basic infantry box, 30 guys for like 25 quid, really, you can build your whole army. So you can build officers, you can build everything from there. However, I wanted to have some just... I just wanted to try out lots of different blister packs because you can get little blister packs from from Warlord. 
And so this leads me on to the other models that I've got. I've got I bought the five man five man command squad blister pack, which comes with five models in it. Uh, it comes with a medic. It comes with a uh, artillery observer slash air observer. So someone who can call in a one's a bit like the master of ordnance essentially. Uh, and then it comes with three officers. The guy with the sword is a junior officer. The guy, uh, the guy with the sword, they've all got swords. The guy who's lunging forward with his sword, like charging forward, he is the junior officer. The guy who has his sword that almost looks like an umbrella and he's just pointing with his finger, he is the senior officer. And then the guy with the white armband the white armband and the pistol and the sword is the political officer, which I can't pronounce. But uh, they were essentially like commissars of the Japanese army. Be like commissars in the Soviet army. These were Japanese commissars. Uh, I am, to be honest, junior officers tend to do more than enough for me. But I haven't played a full thousand point game yet with my Japanese. But in my five hundred point game, a junior officer did fine. Uh, but I'll probably want a senior officer in a bigger game. Um, the political officer, I'm probably not going to use a political officer. They're very, they're not very good, uh, unless you are running a big block of militia. So the Japanese can take late in the late war theaters. They can take big blocks of, of green troops. So green is even worse than experience. You rarely see green troops, but you can, unless you're playing Soviets, but, uh, what he allows you to do is when you when you're when you have a unit that's green experience so normally experience uh, you know sort of ranks of infantry just goes inexperienced regular and and veteran but if you have people which are so inexperienced they've barely even been trained they will be green green is like the worst of the worst now the good thing about green troops is they tend to be super cheap and they're good for just smashing loads of bodies onto the field. That's why Soviets tend to love them. Um, only some, you can't take everyone as green. It's very specific units, like the real militia. Like for example, if you're playing Germans, the Volkssturm and the Last Levy, they are green. They're really green. Um, and same with some of the Soviets. I think you get a free squad of green troops as Soviets. So you get a free squad of just terrible men, but when they first get shot at, you have to roll a dice, and sometimes they'll go... On a 1, it's a really bad result, and the unit's basically useless that game. But on any other roll, it's pretty good. And what the political officer does... And the Japanese can get some militia, you know, late war when everything was going really bad for them. Uh, what this, you can take a big block of militia, and what this political officer basically does is allow you to re-roll that dice when they first get shot at. So you might roll the dice. Imagine if you had a unit of conscripts and when the first time they got shot at, you had to roll a dice. If you roll a one, they became even worse. You'd want some way of being able to re-roll that. So this that's what the political officer lets you do, essentially, in bot action. So he doesn't execute people. I think that's the Soviet ones do, but in, in the Japanese army, they don't execute people. They just let you re-roll the dice to see how good your green, terrible troops are if, you, if you're taking any. I probably won't take any green troops because the fluff around my army, uh, and I probably won't use the suicide anti tank guys either, I just painted them up. But uh, the fluff around my army is that, uh, well, currently it's meant to be an early war Imperial Japanese army where they had, where they had like all regular troops. No one who's like super dead hard experienced, but no one who's really rubbish and green and inexperienced either. They've just been sort of fighting in, in sort of China. For you know, a few months. That's you know, sort of early thirties is the war period. I, is the sort of period my army is focused on. So I won't have any sort of green, terrible, last-ditch militia troops. So what I probably use my political officer for is just another generic character. I mean, he's got a pistol and a sword. He's pretty good as a basic character. And that's everything I've been working on. So it's a. Uh, it's been a busy week and I've, I've had a lot of units to cover and I've sort of given the light touch, the light tactical touch on each one. Um, I mean, ideally this week I would have preferred to have a like a Warhammer video come out to like really catalyze on the momentum from the uh, Winters uh, video, but I don't worry about these things too much. Uh, it's, you know, it's spot action is, is a great game. 
I know there's been a lot of frustration around 40k recently, especially in the guard community, um, with things like Krieg, and there does seem to be some good stuff in the Imperial Armor Compendium, but is it enough to soothe the wounds that are Krieg? I don't know. Uh, but I would highly recommend anyone who, anyone, whether you're a guard player or not, who's feeling a bit of burnout from 40k, from all the, from the endless waves of Primaris, uh, yeah, check out Bot Action. It's really fun. It's very cheap. You can get into it in, I'd say you can build and paint an army in a month or two months. If you really push for it, and we're talking about a 500 point army, because you can get a 500 point army, you can be like, right, I'm done. I don't need to buy anything else. 500 points is a perfect acceptable level to play bot action at, but most people do go for a thousand points, is what I'm aiming for. Uh, if, you know, I say a thousand point army, you can have fully bought, built, and painted to a good standard in a couple of months. You only need a couple of vehicles, a couple of heavy weapon teams, couple of characters and maybe three or four infantry squads that's all you need uh it's it's really really good so and it's very cheap like i said um you can buy uh your whole bolt action army with your books and your dice and everything probably for about 150 pounds especially if you get it from like discount retailers like goblin gaming or I think Goblin Gaming have a lot of bolt action, so they give 20% off in the UK, which is pretty good. I'm not endorsed or sponsored by them, I just, I know them, and I, I don't know them, I know of them. And I know people who have bought through them and have said they're really, really good. So go and check that out. Um, yeah, so just one other thing I want to say before I sign off, guys. Sorry if this video seems a, you know, a little, little lackluster. Uh, just, I have to be honest, totally shattered from the house move, but um, I will, I will be... That's over now, so I will be back on form next week. Hopefully next week will be, I'll have all the bot action done and then I will f finally just have finished a project from start to end. And um, then we will, I'm sure a lot of people will be really excited the week after to see lots and lots and lots of Morgin Iron Guard. And I think once my bot action is completed, I'm going to really settle down for some uh, for some guard. I think Christmas is coming up soon. So between November and sort of mid-November and end of the year, I'm just gonna just gonna paint guard. I'm just gonna really get into the groove and you know finish off third platoon. You know, those of you that come over from the Winters Battle Report, you know, obviously welcome, just <laughs> at the beginning of the video. Uh ugh, bloody phone going off dinging, making the whole bloody video totally professional. But um yeah, you saw 1st and 2nd Platoon. I am most of the way through 3rd Platoon. All the models are built I just need, and base code just need painting. So most of 3rd Platoon has been done as well. And then when 3rd Platoon is done, guess what? It's 4th Platoon. Oh yeah, guys. And I'm really excited just to get into... Just to get into some more guard. More than 9 guard. Got loads and loads of models lined up ready to get painted. So that's what that's what we're looking forward to. So we'll be done with our little little side project, little distraction uh, in the next week or so. Um, hopefully, I mean, I won't be probably won't be able to get any bot action games in anytime soon, unfortunately, with the new lockdown. But when the lockdown lifts, uh, I will have a full a thousand point army to play with, and we will be able to see some bolt action battle reports be really cool the plan would obviously be to do some bolt action battle reports over the course of christmas and whatnot but that's probably going to be very unlikely i'm not never say never you don't know what could happen but uh yeah we may have to wait a little bit before we can see some bolt action which is a bit of a shame uh 40k battle reports we met there may be some 40k battle reports coming um in the future, although they will be very casual ones, to be fair, very you know, low level, like 500 to 1000 point ones. Um, if I can persuade, if I can persuade Mrs. Mordian to get her Necrons out onto the field of battle. She has a whole Necron army, which she's built up over a couple of years and she's got a new codex and thing now. So she probably, she probably should use them, shouldn't she? But uh, that would be really cool. Please, if you do, if you would like to see 
uh, if you'd like to see a domestic incident between the two of us while we play 40k on camera, please put that down in the comment section below. Uh, and I think you know, they have been featured once or twice on the channel before, but if it's going to be... If we're going to be going to a second lockdown, I think it would be pretty cool to to get the old Necrons out of the channel and have you know, you know, mindless, autonomous killing machines versus Necrons. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Have the the Iron Guard versus Necrons. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the bolt action models. If you are new to the Morning Glory channel, please ask lots and lots of questions. If you are new to the Morning Glory channel and you were thought, oh, the thought it's about Warhammer, what's the bolt action malarkey? Please just ask the questions. We've got a great community over here of historical and non-historical and 40k and Imperial Guard and bot actions people. So, and I will try and get back to as many questions as possible. I read every comment uh, and I do try and reply to as many as possible. So anyway, before I ramble any further, let's wrap that one up here, guys. So thank you for watching. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.